What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? How are you doing today? I hope you're excited because today we are finally back with a top five trending Young Guns video. This is going to be the top five trending Young Guns for the month of September 2024. Now, of course, if you guys didn't notice, we missed doing the top five trending Young Guns for the month of August. That being because there wasn't really any trending Young Guns for the month of August because uh, it is the off season. Things are kind of slow right now. That's still the same for September, but there are some Young Guns I wanted to talk about and enough that I was willing to make a video for September 2024 uh, to go over some Young Guns. That that I see trending with you guys and give my thoughts and opinions. As per usual, this is not financial advice. Please invest in sport cards at your own risk. All graphs will be courtesy of sport card investor, not a sponsor or anything for PSA 10, Young Guns, and US dollars. And if you guys are new to the channel, if you do me a big favor, please consider subscribing. It really means a lot to me. I appreciate each and every one of you. Drop a like on this video if you did enjoy it, and make sure you comment down below your top five trending Young Guns for the month of September. And who's your favorite Young Gun going to next season? Let me know down in the comments below. And yeah, without further ado, let's kick things off with number five. All right, with number five, it's a bit of an interesting case because I I think he's a very talented player but his situation is a little strange it's matthew barzell of the new york islanders matthew barzell is by far away the most productive forward on the new york islanders and his young guns is trending up slightly a bit this month not anything crazy uh i'll get into that when we look at the graph but matthew barzell is a heck of a player he's around a point per game every single season the issue with barzell is he he's not really a superstar i would say uh maybe he's a he's a star i think him and aho are pretty comparable like he's around point per game he's never really had like a crazy under point season take a look at barzell stats from last year he's exactly a point per game 80 points in 80 games and looking at his career stats that's basically what he is he's kind of always been around a point per game he's never really had a crazy 100 point season uh there's a couple ways barzell's cards could gain substantial value i think one of them would be he has a crazy 100 point season he takes over the islanders offense and he's this a completely new player and he's just absolutely controls the game out there another way is if the islanders are going to go on a long cup run now i don't think that's likely it could happen you never know i just don't love barzell going in the next season i think we kind of know what we got with barzell now take a look at this graph here like i said guys this is a hard month to do because there's no hockey being played right now if this was a normal month during the season i probably wouldn't include barzell on this list because this just lo looks like a spike sale to me personally of 80 dollars us uh i don't think he's trending upwards this could just be a spike sale if they keep staying around 80 dollars, then obviously he'd be on the trending young list uh but honestly with barzell i'm not crazy on him i think he's a really good player he's gonna get around a point per game this season but will people care in the hobby i just don't think so now matt barzell could see hovering around the 50 dollars range this guy at number four i think it's a little more interesting because i think he has a higher ceiling but a way lower floor it's zach benson the buffalo sabers and i think zach benson could have an absolute breakout season or he could crash and burn and be worth like five dollars raw uh it's going to be one or the other it's gonna be interesting to see what happens with buffalo this season they have so many young forwards it's gonna be interesting to see who steps up who gets that top power play time who gets that top development time uh but yeah i like zach benson former 13th overall pick of the buffalo sabers uh now i, I don't know where some expectations like maybe around 50 points but even if he does score 50 points as a sophomore are people going to care uh probably not maybe more long term zach benson's a good buy uh but we'll have to wait and see Benson registered 30 points in his rookie season last year, and let's hope he can avoid that sophomore slump that so many players seem to have in the NHL. If he can avoid that and improve on his numbers, I could definitely see this young guns going up during the season, especially if Buffalo is in the playoff race or in the playoffs and competing for a Stanley Cup. Take a look at his graph here. You can see over the past month, it started around 28 US dollars, a low of, and it's kind of slowly been trending upwards with a looks like a recent sale of 62 US. Now, I think that's too high for what he's done so far, but I do like the offensive upside Zach Benson provides, and if he can be a big part of this Buffalo Sabres attack, and if Buffalo can finally break through and make the playoffs, I think this Young Guns does have some potential to go up next season. All right, up next at number three, I am very interested to watch the Tampa Bay Lightning without Steven Stamkos next year and see how a guy like Braden Point will perform. His Young Guns is currently trending in the month of September. Uh, it's interesting to see what the offense will look like with Kucherov and, of course, Gensel now injected into that lineup and some other key departures like Miguel Sergachev. Uh, this is going to be a really different looking Tampa Bay Lightning team and I'm interested to see how well they do next season. I think everyone expects them to be back in the playoffs just because they always are. Uh, so I don't expect them to miss playoffs and they are always a threat to go on a deep playoff run. Unfortunately throughout Braden Point's career he's been playing third fiddle behind Nikita Kucherov and Steven Stamkos. Now with the departure of Steven Stamkos uh, I think Jake Gensel's more of like a similar player to Braden Point. Not like actual player but like point wise i mean uh he kind of gets around the same point totals as braden point braden points never hit 100 points jake gensel's never hit 100 points uh if braden point were to go out there and hit 100 points this card could 
potentially go up. Uh, I just think in order for Braden Point's cards to gain significant value, I think they would have to go on a deep playoff run, and Braden Point would have to be heavily involved. Taking a look at this graph, you can see one earlier in the month sold for around $63 US, one recently sold for as high as $92 US. Does this trend continue? We'll have to wait and see. I think Tampa Bay would have to go on a playoff run, like I said, for his card to gain some significant value above Braden Point. Heck of a player, can't deny that. All right, up next on number two on our list is going to be someone I'm expecting a big season out of next year. It's going to be Kirill Kaprizov of the Minnesota Wild. There's no denying the last year in Minnesota, things did not go to plan. Things were miserable. It was just an overall rough season. I think it's time for the Wild to write it off, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if the Wild came out absolutely humming this season. Uh, I think Kaprizov, he got off to a very slow start last year, of course, had that injury, and then he came back, and then he was lighting it up once again. Now, I think he could definitely hit the 100-point mark. He's definitely capable of that, and if he does, I think this card could go up in value. Of course, if Minnesota is involved in the playoff race, that would help as well. I keep uttering these things because that's how these cards gain value. In Minnesota, it's an okay card market. It's not the best market in the world. It's not the worst. It's kind of right in the middle. Decent card market for Kaprizov. Of course, Kaprizov was just shy of hitting that 100-point mark once again last season with 96 points in 75 games. Games. If he played the full season, definitely would have hit, hit it. Um, now, I think a lot of Kaprizov, the, comparing to a guy like Point, like if he had a, if he hits 100 points, that's kind of like his expectation. I think the Wild would have to go on like a playoff run. He'd have to perform well in the playoffs because we haven't really seen Kaprizov take over in the playoffs like we have with other players. I think if he could have a game or a series like that where Kaprizov just takes over and wins it for the Wild, I think that's where this card could gain substantial value. Take a look at his graph. One early in the month sold for around 106 US. One recent sold for as high as 151 US. Uh, does this trend continue? We'll have to see what kind of start the Wild get out to and how if they can make get back in the playoffs and if they can go on a run. Uh, Kaprizov is the franchise guy there, so there'll be a lot of attention on his cards. All right, we've reached our number one spot, and I actually talked about this card a couple weeks ago, and it is Matthew Nyes of the Toronto Maple Leafs. His Young Guns is currently trending, and it makes sense for reasons I talked about in that video with the top five trending Young Guns. Uh, Matthew Nyes, he's in a, a real good position to succeed with the Toronto Maple Leafs next season. Season. Of course, the Maple Leafs have that crazy card market. So if Matthew Nyes can take another step, of course, this card is going to gain value. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see how Nyes plays and where he is in the lineup. Take a look at his point totals from last season. We can see Matthew Nyes scored 35 points in 80 games in his first full season in the NHL. And I expect Nyes to have a top six role on the Toronto Maple Leafs and probably be playing with either Austin Matthews or Mitch Marner, if I were the guest. Definitely with William Nylander, one of those three he's got to play with, at least from my point of view. We'll have to see when training camp gets going a little later this week and into the preseason who Nyes is playing with because if he's in the bottom six that's not what we want to see take a look at his graph here you can see about a month ago one sold for 80 dollars us and one recently sold for around 130 us so that is a pretty significant increase i think people are, are anticipating that matthew Nyes is going to take a big step next year and with the crazy leaf market if matthew Nyes starts to play well early on next year i think his card will go up faster than players on other teams like minnesota or like tampa for example because there is such a big spotlight on toronto but if Matthew Nyes does struggle, he is going to... I don't know if his cards will go down quickly or if they'll stay the same. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens with Nyes next year, but I do like him as a buying option. All right, guys, that's going to do it for the top five trending young guns for the month of September. Make sure you subscribe because we'll be having the top five 2021 young guns. I think have a chance to go up next season video coming out very shortly, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. Drop a, drop a like on this video if you did enjoy. Comment down below if I missed anyone on this list. My list is in the right list. Let me know if I missed anyone on this list down in the comments below. And yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Take care, everybody. Have a good one.